up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share next steps for those of you who took the April LSAT. Before I get into it, a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So in terms of next steps, you have a few options. First off, of course, you have a couple of weeks until you get your LSAT score back. During that time, you can take a well-deserved rest because after all, congratulations, you did it. You sat for the LSAT, you took it. Hopefully you rocked it. If you've been studying pretty diligently over the past couple of weeks or past couple of months, you deserve a break for at least a couple of days. However, if you are not totally sure that the April LSAT was it for you, if you are strongly considering a retake in June or August or beyond, you may not want to do nothing for a full two weeks or so. You might end up feeling a little bit rusty. So I recommend taking at least one or two timed practice tests and reviewing them in depth while you wait to get your LSAT score back. Then, of course, you can make a more informed decision once you do get your score about whether you are going to, in fact, retake it in June or August or beyond. If you are applying to law school in the fall for the upcoming cycle, which I expect many of you are, you then have a decision to make. Do you take it in June or do you take it in August, September, October, or November? This year is a little bit different than most years because it is a transition year. The June LSAT will be the last one administered by ProctorU, and it will also be the last LSAT where you only have the option to take it online. Going forward, starting with the August LSAT, you will have the option to take it either in person or online, both options administered by a company called Prometric rather than ProctorU, which has administered the LSAT over the past three years or so since the beginning of the pandemic. This year, I honestly don't love the June LSAT because you have fewer options. You can only take it online and you can only take it with ProctorU, which to be honest, hasn't had a great track record in terms of administering the online LSAT. There have been a number of issues over the past few years, which you can read about on websites like Reddit, where the proctors will abruptly take control of your computer, take control of your mouse, interrupt you during the exam. They may abruptly switch your proctor in the middle of the test. And so hopefully we will have a better experience with Prometric going forward, starting with the August LSAT. The other thing about the June LSAT is that it only gives you another two months from today to study. If you choose to take the August LSAT instead, you are giving yourself an additional two months, effectively doubling the duration of your LSAT prep time between today and your LSAT retake. So if you feel like another two months alone might not be enough time, and if you will be available to study for the LSAT over the summer, I strongly recommend that you aim for the August LSAT instead to give yourself a full four months of additional LSAT prep time, which will allow you to achieve your fullest potential on the LSAT. Plus, the August LSAT lets you apply at the very beginning of the cycle in the fall, just like the June LSAT does, only August gives you another two full months. Of course, if the April LSAT is it for you, if you're done, if you're confident you got your score, congratulations. Focus on your applications, your essays, letters of recommendation, resume, all that good stuff. My team and I would love to help you out with that. We have an essay editing service. We can help you out with your personal statement, diversity statement, optional essays and addenda, resume, and so on. However, of course, our primary focus is the LSAT, which we can help you out with as well, whether it's through our live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We would, of course, love to help you out. If you are considering an LSAT retake, you want to think about what you could do differently the next time around. Did you not devote enough time to your prep on a weekly basis? Did you take too many breaks? Were you studying sporadically? Did you not have an effective and efficient LSAT prep study plan? I recommend, of course, regimented LSAT study schedules. I have many general ones that I've covered on YouTube, much more in my courses. But the fundamental idea is that you want to have at least three phases to your LSAT prep. Phase one, focusing on accuracy with individual questions by type to make sure that you understand the proper perspective from which to view each section and each question type. 
Next is pacing with individual timed sections. And finally, bringing it together with full length timed exams in the lead up to test day. Now, I am looking for a couple of students who are taking the LSAT this fall and aiming for a 170 plus LSAT score. I have a couple of requirements in terms of what it takes to become one of my students in a private one on one coaching program. However, I'm looking for students who've been studying for at least three months who have a strong foundation in the basics of the LSAT, the different sections, the different question types. And finally, they have achieved a score of 160 or above on at least one practice test. If you meet these criteria, I would love to hear from you and further discuss the possibility of working together in a private intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So please, again, check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. And if you found this video helpful, please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps with that YouTube algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.